Oh, so I guess we're back to kindergarten level discourse. <sighs> Look, I just want to take a quick break from all the high-minded pretentious shite for a moment and talk about the kind of topics where everything that could have possibly been said has already been said and most of what's been said is gibberish. So we're doing graphics versus gameplay like it's 2001 and the Wind Waker is still relevant. Wind Waker came out in 2002. Exactly. I'm going to get skinned alive for that one. We're not actually doing graphics versus gameplay. I just wanted to wind down a bit and talk about some other stuff that I genuinely like about the various Uncharted that falls under the loose umbrellas of either graphics or gameplay. For example, have you ever noticed how pretty these games actually are? That probably sounded like a joke, but no, I mean it. Drake's Fortune came out 15 years ago. It has no right to still look this good. Naughty Dog, as a studio, have a reputation for pushing photorealism in a way most other studios can only dream of. But most games celebrated for photorealistic visuals that showcase all the newest bells and whistles of their expensive engines have a tendency to exist for a couple of years. And then it turns out that actually they looked like garbage all along. All the Uncharted's still look amazing. That's not just me, right? It's not nostalgia goggles, I'm not hallucinating. These old ass games are really fucking pretty. <laughs> Here's the thing about that. Back in the day, we were all too busy being dazzled by this showcase of whatever the late 2000s standard of realism was to notice, but the technical achievement was never really the impressive part. I, I mean, it was impressive. The PS3 was an overcomplicated toaster. Making anything with that level of technical fidelity actually run on it feels like it should exist outside of the bounds of reality. But no, what really made it what it was, was the art direction. What do you mean, art direction? Uncharted doesn't look anything like the Wind Waker. Cell shading isn't the same thing as art direction, okay? Look, Twilight Princess looks far better than the Wind Waker, but apparently the nerds think that the only two modes of graphics are realism or art direction, and I refuse to let that rotting corpse of a discourse creep into this script, so you know what? I'm just going to cut this whole bit out, and you'll never know that I've committed the ultimate sin of saying that something looks better than the fucking Wind Waker. So, I assume that because you are boring and uncultured, you like those hyper-realistic portrait drawings that are the bread and butter of every art gallery. So, the thing about those is that they are also heavily stylized. Visual artists don't usually try to copy their subjects one-to-one -one like a camera would. The ones that know what they're doing, they tend to design their drawings vaguely around the subject to make the outcome actually, you know, look good. There's a lot of decision making involved in that. That naked asshole sitting in front of you in the life drawing class clearly doesn't understand Swiss style, keeps misaligning their limbs and creating annoying tangents, so it's up to you to massage the angles and shapes into place on your canvas. Real life also has tons of detail that you don't need. You have to know when to not bother so that the bits that you do go to town on pop a bit more. It's that sort of thing. My point is, Naughty Dog is one of the best studios that I have ever seen at doing that with real-time 3D rendering. It's not just the immaculate character models and hardware-melting VFX, it's the decision-making. It's stylization, composition, and color. And that's the sort of thing that's still going to look good even when the technological wow factor goes away. I don't have a point here, I just think that's neat. They're an incredibly talented bunch of people and I'm jealous. Another thing I wanted to mention is the pacing. Out of all the things that this series is good at, if I had to pick just one that really makes it what it is, it would have to be the pacing. It is exemplary stuff. I don't even know what else to say here. I'll just be repeating the stuff that other people have already said years ago. Not that that's ever stopped me. So, one of the things you'll probably need to know about me if you're going to be coming to me to learn what your video game opinions are is that I really like Prince of Persia. That's what that earlier outburst about cinematic platformers was, by the way. Prince of Persia was the undisputed king of the genre. Or I guess, Prince of Genre. And that genre basically doesn't exist anymore, and that makes me sad. There were so many things to love about that series too. The art, the setting, the characters, the platforming system, so good that everyone else apparently just gave up on trying to copy them. But the most defining feature of the series, to me, was the tight level design driven pacing. Which is where I think Uncharted still carries some of that legacy of the cinematic platformers that has been lost over the years. The lost legacy, if you will. I'm sorry, I can't seem to stop myself from doing that. So, like, 
You know that bit in Uncharted 2 when you're lost in the Himalayas and take a big long walk through a nice little village while Drake keeps his insatiable bloodlust under control for almost 10 whole minutes. Tim Rogers calls this kind of thing a prestige door and just how important its inclusion in the game was was not lost on critics. There's a reason why this village bit comes up every time someone mentions Uncharted 2 even though it's a part of the game where nothing happens. Somehow the game managed to turn that bit of nothing, a moment of peace and quiet at the end of an escalator series of set pieces so intense one of them got confused and ended up at the start of the game into a little reward. It was exactly the right thing to put in exactly the right place at exactly the right time. What a thrill. And it's like that for every part of the game, nothing is out of place, every beat, every moment feels meaningful and contributes to the sense of energy and momentum that keeps you pushing forward until the credits roll. And that kind of thing is really hard to do. For example, this whole chapter is supposed to be like that. A kind of a break where I stop building up towards any of the main points and let the script breathe a bit as I go off on a few tangents. But all it's managed to accomplish so far is to break any semblance of structure the series otherwise might have had. You know, I'm increasingly convinced that writing isn't a real thing that people can do and everyone that claims to know how to write is lying to you. What also helps Uncharted 2's pacing is how combat encounters are structured. Every one of them has a twist or a unique premise. No two shootouts play out the same, or I guess would play out the same if they weren't all entirely metaphorical. No single idea overstays its welcome. Everything takes exactly as long as it needs to. Hell, even something as seemingly inconsequential as collectibles are handled with restraints. If you see one, you pick it up. It doesn't grind your forward progression to the hole, and you're not really missing out if you ignore them, it's just a little extra layer of interaction while the overall focus stays where it needs to be. Sadly, everything I've said here only really applies to Uncharted 2 and 4. The first game has that whole long bit in the middle consisting of a never-ending series of identical firefights against the backdrop of identical Grey Castle ruins. Meanwhile, Lost Legacy, in its infinite wisdom, decided to drop an aggressively unnecessary open world with an even more aggressively unnecessary scavenger hunt right in the middle of its runtime, the reward for completing which was a mercifully optional QOL feature that ironically made the rest of the game worse if you turned it on. I don't know what was up with that, but please stop it. Uh, seriously, I could go on a huge rant about modern AAA open world design and how it's an empty series of manipulative Skinner boxes with no redeeming qualities, but I think I'd better get back to that in a different video. I feel like I keep promising all these potential future topics that I may or may not get around to talking about. God knows when. I guess you're just going to have to subscribe and then wait and see. Also give me money on Patreon. Uh, you won't get anything of value in return, I just think it would be really cool if you gave me your money. As for Uncharted 3, uh, the pacing of that game on the whole is kind of a mess, which is one of the many reasons why it's the worst game in the series. But I'll get to Uncharted 3 later. Actually, let's get to Uncharted 3 now.